on the on the world global stages and we thank you we thank you for that we welcome you um she's a very generous woman who says i want to empower you i want you all to have this have these workshops and i'll be sitting at the back and just helping you and supporting you and how amazing is that can we just say thank you in the chat and say how amazing is that so after that i would like to introduce to you who we are for those that maybe is their first time to be here as african africa women in trade as you can see from our slides so we are not going to be reading line to line but um <clears throat> Okay, if I can just get, yay, right. This is what our story is. Africa Women in Trade is a social enterprise which was created by the need for Africa women in Europe to support Africa women and youth in, as, as small, medium enterprises and with an aim to inform, create market access, link investors and funders share skills and form sustainable partnerships following the AFC FTA agreement. We know that as of the 1st of 2021, this was launched and we all now are here because we are agreeing to that call to say Africa rise, take advantage, the world is looking up to you. That is our story, our vision. Our vision is to create a platform to connect and enable Africa women and youth to trade under the AFC FTA uh, agreement. That is our vision, in case you just want to know who we are. Our mission to create a network where Africa women and youth can access information regarding Africa continental free trade area, provide market access national, nationally, regionally, and global, at a global level, offer capacity building and financial access through grants and investments. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Our pillars, we are Africa Women in Trade. Our pillars, it is of course information on AFCFTA, uh, it is market access, grant and investments, and finally, the capacity building. Um, a lot of information you will see there, we have the information. So this is just to explain what our pillars are elaborating on them. Our objectives to empower women, Africa women in trade, enable trading within Africa and globally to inform and share useful information to the women. Right, it says my, your information corner is unstable, but if you can still hear me, please assure me that you can hear me. Uh, Messi, can you hear me? You will be my here. Yeah. Messi? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To inform and share useful information to the women, providing capacity building by offering training to members. Perfect. Addressing the SDG. SDG, it, it stands for Sustainable Development Goals through creation of jobs, eradication eradicating poverty and improve Africa economy. Follow one to follow the new Africa continental free trade era regulations and guidelines to provide financial access through grants and investments. Financial access through grants and investments, um, that's one thing, to be part of policy influence by sharing with government institutions challenges as well as good practice. That is the most important one. Many a times we have been on these platforms, but yet we short, we, we short, we fall short of influencing policy, and we fall short of having access to those policymakers, even government institutions and others, and even investors. And here at home at AWT, we have that. What are our values? Trust and build relationships. We collaborate, respect is top to us because we are in Africa. And then here we are talking about the areas of interest, export and import, of course, because we are dealing with the global markets, finance institutions, women programs, technology, Coco, that's why you are here, youth programs, construction and manufacturing industries. These are our seven area of interest, in, uh, interest. agriculture, 
which finally agriculture. Um, perfect, perfect. So AW has supported these brands. As you can see, we are not just a talk show. We have already put into practice where our money is. These are the products that we have already been um, the brands promote if member product ready for infra trade Africa and global markets. You are right at home. We have over 4,000 members in all our social platforms. You can see the women there doing their thing. As you are ah, women in textile, women that are doing arts craft. This is our leadership. These are all representatives across the continent in different countries. We have Kenya, we have uh, Kenya again, we have Nigeria, we have our founder who is Kenyan born, but residing in Germany. We have our South Africa, there is my colleague, Oliver. We have Ghana, we have Basime, we have what? Rwanda. Rwanda, we have Rwanda and we also have US Kenyan born. We have Cameroon, we have Rwanda again, we have Zambia, we have Mozambique, Mozambique, Boatarde, Bondia, we have Angola, Mozambique and Angola country representative representing both of them. Oh, wonderful. That is our leadership. And I know that you are worried that, but we don't see yours. And you said you are also a representative from South Africa. It's loading. You know, we leave the best for the last. So it is loading. So that is who we are, ladies and gentlemen. And then just please do not forget, always on our platforms, we have been talking about the up and coming conference in October. Before we end, we will elaborate on this one. We are hoping that our colleague Oliver will be here to tell us more about it. Right now, we would like to now bring down this presentation so that we can kickstart our program now that we have both our speakers, powerful speakers that have made time for us. They are also now in the house. Now, Joy, help me. How, to, I, how do I bring down this? Where do I say? What do I say? Where do I bring down the presentation so that I can see you all? Kindly, I stop stop, kindly stop the presentation you see on the red button. Right. Up above you. Perfect. Am I, am I back now? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we are here. This technology, we are going to get we are going to get used to it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for making time. You have heard who we are, you have heard our vision, you have heard our mission, you have heard the work that we already have done. And now we want to invite you. If you are not a member yet, we have the website, there it is. Thank you very much, Messi. Please become our member. This is a moving vehicle. So right now, after we have introduced who we are, after we have already welcomed everybody, Memabu, please just show if you are ready for us. We are going to be hearing from Mabu. Um, who is the founder? Who is the founder of Lifa Confirming? She is also the president of Mdasa, which is the Moringa Development Association in South Africa. A powerful woman who's already a very successful in agro processing in Moringa. She has already even um, invented many few products in within Moringa and still going on venturing into cannabis products, venturing into also cosmetics. So I don't want to be preempting so that we all can be able to hear her as she speaks to us, telling us about the journey as an entrepreneur, an Africa woman in trade. Mema Buang, the stage is yours, madam. <coughs> I think we lost her. She didn't hear it. I'm hoping that we lost her. She lost somehow. The... We lost her. Right. Do we still have? Um, we will go to her as soon. And that Moss is around. That Moss. That Moss, can you hear us? Yeah. Um, 
Yes, even though I'm we were trying to apply, you know, the we were applying to, to apply the principle that says ladies first. So now that technology is not dealing with us well, we will allow you to take up the stage. And while we are trying to help um, Memabu to come back on the platform. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready and I appreciate that because I want to be yes. long. Yeah. We are um, ready for you. Okay. Let me go to my document. If my document is Could you kindly put the camera on? Okay. Yeah, I'm still trying to deal with this presentation. It's Give me a problem. I want to load it first. Um, Do you need the sharing powers? Yes. You want to see the, the meeting guy? <laughs> we would love to see you who we're speaking the... to. We've been we've been waiting to hear from you. Okay, right. Well, thank you. Who? Uh, let me do this. I don't think this thing is. Going friendly with me. I will just quickly dismiss two things and start. Because I'm using the phone, I'm not using the laptop. Right. So while he's busy preparing himself, ladies and gentlemen, those that have just joined us, please let us know where you are joining from. It is indeed a great pleasure to have you around. Mabu is back. Now, we will try and because now you are ready, you can go ahead, sir. We can see you, thank you. So you want to share or you just gonna be speaking from your side, your presentation? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to start, but um, I'll, I'll even share the presentation with you guys um, because I don't see it on my screen. Good evening, everybody. Is it evening already or is it still afternoon? It's evening. It's evening. All right, thank you for the opportunity. Jambo, uh, Kenya, do we have Kenya in the house? <laughs> yes, yes, Kenya is in the house. Okay. Yes, and Jambo was. The... Jambo, Jambo, Jambo. Uh, Karibu, Karibu. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, without any waste of time, my name is Mosa Reme. Um, I happened to meet um, Oliver, what a great guy, um, in Cape Town last year. We talked about what we're doing, and he shared these platforms. And I said, even now, my voice doesn't come cheap. I normally accompany my voice with an invoice. I'll be of a good heart and offer my services there and there. And then if you guys love my work, you can now start procuring me for, for a fee. But um, without any waste of time, thank you for the opportunity. AWT, I think you deserve a big round of applause and a standing ovation because one of the things that is holding Africa back, we must um, accept and we must um, agree that uh, women development is something that we're not giving a good, good attention and a deserved attention. We, it, it's still a talk show. Everyone, we're doing presentations, conferences in. 54 or 55 um, recognized states of the continent, and we're still talking about women development, women empowerment. That's a tough job. There's no, there's no deliberate efforts to make sure that um, this gender parity thing, we take it for serious and we develop it. And I'm happy to announce that um, one of the people who believe in the concept, who believe in the subject, and um, last year I launched one of my annual event called Girl Pumas. Uh, it's a business conference for only women um, to, deliver, to deliver, deliberate on economic issues, business issues, leadership issues. So every September, we will see that part. So I'm taking my stand, I'm, taking, I'm doing my part, and I hope that um, it will be an impactful session with your, 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 your team here. So without any waste of time, let me go to the subject that I was asked to entertain. Um, I think we're supposed to talk about trade, and um, uh, I hope, Mr. Chair, am I right? I'm supposed to talk about trade in Sare and specifically South Africa. Um, 
as as per your you know as per your broad experience so that because we are yes in the the webinar is organized by south african chapter however though we have everybody globally we have usa in the house we have germany in the house we have all other countries that are here so have um the ball is in your court you've got about 25 minutes and then the five minutes will be for q a yeah uh, 25 minutes will be too much i uh, will just go straight to the point um just said that this presentation is not doing as i want it to, to do but um I'll, I'll go without it for now and i'll say it um afterwards um the most important thing is um how do we trade in africa but we need to be careful because um, everybody says Africa is, um, is quite um, a fertile ground. And we believe that, and we have seen with a lot of um, foreign direct investments for people who, who came in Africa as just an idea in, and just a business concept that they wanted to put and to thrive in Africa. And today they are big conglomerates, big companies. So what does it mean? It means Africa for sure is a serious, serious, fertile ground, but the question is, how are we using that fertile ground to grow our seeds? And it, we, we realize for many years that um, Africans are not benefiting from this um, fertile economic um, opportunities. So what is the, the cause of the problem? When you underline, there are a few things, but before we go there, let's agree that um, SADC, has a, uh, SADC has business opportunities, but SADC has a turnaround time of three to eight weeks to start and to set up and register business. When I talk about SADC, I'm talking about 14 recognized states from South Africa, Botswana, Malawi, Zambia, Namibia, Lesotho, you can name them all. The turnaround time to start to set up a business is three to 12, uh, eight weeks. And then we go to East Africa. East Africa, we're talking one to 12 weeks. And I'll, I'll give you why we say one to 12 weeks. Because when you go to countries like Rwanda, I love the development. I give credit to what um, um, Rwanda Development Board is doing. You can register business the same day and later get a certificate. So it tells that there's something that we, we're doing in the continent and other countries has to take um, portion and lessons from their part. When you go to North Africa, of which to my, and I'm, I'm, I'll apologize if we've got people from North Africa, I still believe, say, Michelle, to my, to my definition, I still say North Africa to me. It's not Africa. <laughs> it's Africa when they need us, and it's not, it's not Africa if they don't need us. So, but when you go to start a business in, in, in North Africa, the turnaround time is two to eight weeks. Egypt, they give you 12 days at, at most to register your business, to set up your business banking. Um, 12 to 18 days, you can get your taxes and your business account. And in Central Africa, one of the not so um, um, regions in the continent. Um, I'm still skeptical about uh, Central Africa. We we need to do a lot, and the leadership there needs to do a lot when it comes to Central Africa. We're talking six to um, six to sixteen weeks to set up a business in the in the member member states of the Central Africa and West Africa. The dominating, the biggest, the hub of African economy. Um, we're talking about three to sixteen weeks because um, one of the tiring thing to, to do a business in Nigeria, for example, it's um, compliance and, regu and regulator, uh, uh, regulatory um, organization and boss. But when you go to countries like Ghana, it's still um, doable. You can do it in, in, in two to three weeks or uh, two to 12 weeks if it's maximum. But although these um, um, statistics are there, we realize that there's a quick turnaround time with Rwanda, with South Africa, with Botswana across the 54 countries. Then the question is, why other countries are not following to this precedence of these three countries? So we realized that um, setting up a business in Sarek is the quickest across the continent. And the average time based on quicker and slower countries within these 15 member states, in South Africa, it takes a week. If you go to register a company today, probably by, 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 by next week, Tuesday, you'll be having your registration certificate. Then the minute you register business, you already get what we call a tax reference. So you can just go to what we call South African Revenue Services and then submit the tax, um, tax reference number and you get your taxes. And then you already have your CIPC, which is the register of companies in the country. And it takes one to five days to open a business account. 
And in other banks, it takes one day. In other banks, two days. In other banks, it takes five days. That is what I'm saying, one to five days. And that's what we call triple DE certificate, that you cannot trade in South Africa if you don't have the document. So when you decide to come and venture and trade in South Africa, make sure that these are the documents that you know they are, are required at the go as a compliance documentation. Triple DEE is what you call a um, uh, board bag um, economic empowerment um, uh, document for um, previously disadvantaged people in the, in the country. And in Botswana, it takes about two, two weeks um, to register a company and other two weeks to do your compliance. So plus or minus four weeks, then you can get um, your documentation in Botswana. You get that CPA certificate, you got um, 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 checks, which is there. And then just what you call certificate of trade in Botswana. You need to have that before you can trade in Botswana. And to open a bank account, you can still do that in Botswana in two, three weeks time. And then in Namibia, one of the most, most effective countries like Rwanda, I give them um, eight out of 10. You can register business in one or two, one to three days. Then you've got your business certificate with BIPA, which is their register of companies, do checks in the next um, week, and then do banking in the next two weeks. So that's how I, 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 I normally advise people. Before you decide to trade in the continent, these are the things that you need to take into consideration. So more that before you encounter problems, at least you have dealt with your, com your compliance parts. And then the other slide, um, in, um, we'll talk more about South Africa because this is where I'm from. So if you want to start a business in South Africa, and I'm telling you, South Africa is one of the fertile grounds in the continent. Where you can remember every, every year when you do the, the economic analysis, South Africa is in the top two. It's either South Africa number one, and Nigeria is number two, or South Africa is number uh, number two, and then Nigeria is number one. So it's always that um, exchange of, of, of economic power between the two states. South Africa, 60 million people. Nigeria, over 200 million people. So it clearly tells you already the ground is fertile compared to your Namibia with um, one, to, one to two million people, compared to Lesotho, compared to Botswana with uh, 2.5 million people. So at least you've got liberty of being able to sustain something that you are starting. But the problem is in South Africa, even though the ground is fair time, not every business is a good business idea for the market in the, in, in, in the country. In South Africa, first time that you need to take into consideration, number one, you need to take trading licenses to consideration, and they are very, very affordable. That's something about this country, that everything is affordable. And you don't need as a, a South African partner like other countries. For example, in Botswana, they used to say before you open a company in Botswana, you need to have a, a, Botswana, uh, a, a Botswana citizen as part of your uh, company directors. And then in South Africa, no, there's nothing like that. For FICA, which is financial um, and, 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 and other compliances, banking, you need to go to home affairs, get the clarity. Either you are, you are working or you want um, a, a, a residence for business um, purposes. So before you go to banking and other financial issues, you, never, you have to pass by home affairs so that they can give you a go ahead. However, a need for maximum and intensive research is required and feasibility is non-negotiable if, if you want to start a business in South Africa because the market of South Africa is complex in nature. So when you want to do business here, you need to emphasize, do what we call comprehensive feasibility study or baseline study and research as to what you want to do with your market, where, because in South Africa, we've got about nine provinces, you can imagine, nine provinces, each city has bigger number of population. So for example, if you're a township called the way to Johannesburg, it's, 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 it's a township that is bigger than many countries in the continent because we're boasting around 1.8 million to 2.5 million people. Um, so it tells you the population is bigger than many populations of other countries in the continent. So once you go to South Africa, you decide to set up a business in South Africa, these are the things that you need to look at. And the good part is the countries that are surrounding South Africa are more into one um, 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 similarities when it comes to documentation and compliance. So you, you, when you're in Namibia, there will be that South African culture. When you're in Soto, there will be that South African culture. When you're in Swatini, formerly known as Swaziland, there will be that South African culture. Then when you go to Zambia, you go to Zimbabwe, you go to Malawi, then we, we're talking another story because that's another um, 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 region, um, um, 
district we still the region. So those are the things that we need to look at before we decide to start a business in South Africa in Sare. And then now the most important thing, I've, I've seen, I've trained, I've coached, I'm mentoring a lot of small businesses. And this is what they struggle with. They still believe that you wake up in the morning, you open a business and you're going to make it. That's one wrong fallacy, especially in Sare. You know, in Sare, modernity is one of the most important factors that you can take into consideration. I'll give you a practical example. One day I traveled from Uganda to, to Kenya, um, 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 I'm from Rwanda to um, Uganda, from Uganda to Kenya. And because I'm used to the economic culture of Sade, I didn't carry cash in my hand. I had my cash because we are used to swiping. I get to the border uh, between uh, Uganda and Rwanda. They want me to pay a $50, a $50 for my visa into Uganda. And I don't have cash with me. I want to swipe the stock uh, swiping machine. Then there's a dilemma that the bus has to leave me there because I don't have a case. So you can imagine the strength. So in in, in Sarek, you can go to any border post, any border port of entry, you are going to swipe when there's, there's a customs, when there's um, visas that you need to settle. So that's the culture that I'm always advised of. When you are used to East Africa culture, when you come down here, it's going to be different. As much as when you leave from East Africa, go to West Africa, things become different. So even in Sarek, Economic modernity is one thing that we practice. So when you come this side, you have a business idea, just look at it, assess it, and be strong. That is a business idea that can survive in a fertile soil that we call Southern or South Africa. And then I created a model uh, after an intensive research that I did some few years, after a trial and error, you know, more than 15 years in the business industry, being a consultant. Then I struggle to say, why am I not getting it right? Why are the people that I'm training are not getting it right? Then I came across a model that I created and I called the model demo matrix or a demo model. You say, before you set up a business, before you institute or set up any um, um, trading enterprise, look at four things. The demo talks about four things. It talks about the demographics, it talks about the equity, it talks about the market, and it talks about opportunity. The biggest mistake that we do as small businesses, as startups, as scale-ups, or as, uh, as, as entrepreneurs, is that we think market is the opportunity. We think opportunity is the market. And that's the biggest mistake we're doing. So now, when you set up a business in this country, Make sure that you understand the demographics. For example, I, I talked a bit about North Africa. When you go to North Africa, number one, culture is very important. Culture is very important. For example, in Muslim community, they don't shake hands easily. You are lucky to shake hands. But in the bottom part of the continent, which is started, we believe that for churches, let's shake hands. But the culture at the top of the, of, of, of the continent, they don't agree to that. So these are the demographics that you need to look at. Economic income levels, economic trends, you need to understand these things. You need to understand the religion and the tradition of the economic market that you are identifying, especially in Sade. Once you come in to do something in South Africa, believe me, it's going to be different because how we culture ourselves is more than like an American style of living in this, in this country. So when you start coming to this country, make sure that feasibility and research is one of your top priorities. Number two, the education level. And this is one thing that we emphasize in the continent, that we need literacy to be part of the continent. We need to move based on the SDG goals of the continent. Now, once you start a business, we are no longer selling to customers that are not informed. Now, you need to understand the education level of customers that you identify. I don't care the market share of the size of the sector that you are identifying in that country, but make sure you understand the education level of that country, that market, that municipality, that region. Very important when you talk about the first D, which is the demographics. Now we go to um, the second one, which is E. E represents equity. And believe me, we still believe that you've got business idea, you're going to get funding, you're going to get investment, you're going to thrive. Believe me, people, it's not like that. Once uh, I talk to, to, to uh, the team that we, we should do um, the, the, a workshop on what we call um, when to source um, funding and when to um, um, apply for investments. But equity means once you start a business, it is good if it, 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 if it has what you call um, a selling component, selling proposition. Now you can now do what? Start engaging what you call investment at a seed level or do what you call bootstrapping. 
it will be the best thing to bootstrap before you go bigger into what you are trying to do. Because one of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs are doing, they want to start, they want to start businesses based on OPM. It doesn't happen like that at the bottom of the pyramid. You cannot use OPM, other people's money. You use your own money, you bootstrap, you fasten your boots before you run. That is how it, it works in the funding um, mainstream. This is are not even entertaining people at the bottom part of the pyramid. So once you've got a new business, you are a novice, you are a rookie. Believe me, you need to use your own money for the business. And that is how it's structured in Sare. The, 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 the level of investment, the level of funding in Sare is close to none. It's very, very small. It's like a needle hole. So you can imagine how difficult it is. So investment at the seed level, it's you, your family, and your friend, or your investment. Now, the most important thing that I always advise my people and my classes is make product to selling equity. There's no reason to hold 100% of nothing instead of holding 2% of a bigger part. You are holding this, um, my company, my company, but it doesn't give, it, give any dividends. So make sure that when you start something and you believe it can work, invest the lessons that we have, start it, prototype um, your uh, MVP, you can do that with your own money. Then after that, you can start sourcing what you call investment. Before we talk series funding, there is what we call pre, uh, pre and then seed capital um, 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 rounds. Then we can talk debt financing. I caution a lot of people, stay away from debt financing because you don't want to start business with an already burden of, of being um, obligated to pay somebody whilst you're not even sure about your revenue, how much you're going to do every month. So avoid debt financing. There's what we call good debt and bad debt. Stay away, excuse yourself from the bad debt. Try to look at what you call good debt, and then you are good to go. Then comes on the last one that you call funding, um, funding series, which is the series A, series B, series C, series D. Let me confess, and I believe um, police here know that the level of investment into the continent are very small and are very minimal. And more of them are going to West Africa and are going to East Africa. And the, the, the smaller portion they come to the bottom part, which is the side. So Central Africa and North Africa, they don't get because North Africa is self-sustainable at most. Now, what we have realized, just between October and um, March this year, we increased from six unicorns to at least eight unicorns. We are approaching 10 because there's two that are coming and promising. So you can imagine out of um, 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 a continent of almost 2 billion, 2.4 billion, 3 billion people. We have only 10 unicorns. It calls for concern. The reason is being, when we start business, we run to what we call invest, um, funding investment, and then we don't want to use what we have. If you don't believe in your idea, if you don't believe in your product, nobody's going to believe it. So it takes you to make sure that you believe you invest in this beautiful baby that you, can, you conceive and give him birth to and take care of that baby before you can take that baby out to what you call other people's money. That's the number, that, that's the E that I'm thinking about. Then the other one is market. So how do we know the market? The market are the customers that you're going to sell. Critically, as we say, when you come, that's why we say, if you can crack the success code of East African market, if you can sell successfully in the East African market, Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, um, Ethiopia, and um, what is the neighboring, the, the other one? Um, those are the countries that, if you can be able to sell in those countries, Tanzania, if you can sell to those people, you can sell everywhere in the continent. So if you can get the secret code of the market in East Africa, SADEC will be an easy road for you. So SADEC is dependent on what you call innovation modernity. If your business is going to surround your it around what you call modernity and technology or innovation, then you can crack the market code of our SADEC. But if you can at the baseline, at the foundation phase, be able to create the success code of East Africa, you are going to go. Then you can win um, um, Central Africa easily, you can win um, 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 uh, West Africa. Then when you talk about market, you're talking about social addressable market. Everyone is your client when you're starting. But don't go with that. Try to put what we call product market fee. Look at the people that, when you were doing demographics um, segmentation and market research, you realize these are the people that are going to say, these are the demographic and, uh, and, and, and 
dynamics that I want to say. So when you create what you call a market, product market fit strategy, then you will get to sell your product to relevant people. Number three, make sure that when you are done with total market, identify your total market, um, identify your product market fit strategy, then you can pinpoint your target market. Because in South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, uh, uh, Lesotho, uh, 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 they are so concerned with innovation and modernity. So if you can decide to come this time, pinpoint your target market, and out of that target market, you go to the last one. You can derive what you call niche market. So that smaller group that you're going to create a market share from, you can rely on, they can rely on you. Then you are able to go in the started, um, um, uh, region. Then the last one in my demo metrics is opportunities. Now, you can see there's a market for me. The demographics, the demographics are agreed. The equity, I'm, I'm having resources, but I'm struggling to identify an opportunity. Because when you identify market, automatically you can't say you've identified the opportunity. Now you need to sit down and look at what you call number one, sector viability. Number two, economic trends. Because, for example, in South Africa, the minute you approach winter season, you already live in the apparel clothes brand of, 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 of summer. So that's how the trends are going. So you must understand economic trends. In economic trends, already they go to what we call the mainstream economy, the macroeconomics, and microeconomics. So you must look at the inflation, but like currently, setting up a business in South Africa is going to be expensive because inflation is high. So it's not advisable that you can move now. But if it's a high-level industry with a gross, gross uh, profit margin of a high volume, then you can risk because the uh, economic conditions accept and agree with you. You can you should also look at what you call the rating agency because like currently, we've been in a very bad credit rating score. But now we move a bit closer to the middle line. So we are moving a bit north above um, um, above investment portfolio, then what economic stability will come back now to, to, to the country. So what, number three, you need to look at those things. Economic stability. When I'm setting up a business in this, in this country, is my investment going to be safe? For example, when you look at the the war in um, 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 uh, Tigray, the uh, political instability in uh, in Cameroon, other, these, these other countries, Mali, and uh, Burkina Faso, you cannot risk to go and uh, invest in those countries. Why? Because the economic stability is not good because political stability is not favorable. So you can invest, and tomorrow the scoop guitar, and whoever comes say, I don't need this part of businesses. I don't want this part of investment in the country. So your investment goes down the drain. So you need to be sure about the economic stability of every country when you identify what you call economic sectors, opportunity sector. Lastly, industry skills. Entrepreneurs want to be one-man show for the rest of their lives. That is why we remain small for the rest of our lives. We need to start small by thinking big, not thinking small and staying small. So you need to understand when I'm going to this industry, Based on my market research, I'm going to need this type of skills. So these are the people that I'm going to need. Am I able to match those people? Because you cannot run an IT business and you don't have any IT background or skills. So you need to match the skills that you're going to need in future. For example, we're talking for IR, uh, for industrial revolution or for industrial economy. So once you go to start a business in a, in a foreign land, in a in a in a in a, in a fertile land, in a fertile economy, the first the, the last thing that we do is industry skills. Who am I going to hire? And they're still relevant into the future of uh, future of work because the shift, the double shift is saying the future of work is changing. Many skills are going to be obsolete in the next 15 years. So you don't want to rely on the skill that is not going to be relevant anymore. Let's make an example about IT. In 20, 2010, when we had an IT qualification, you are still talking about the, 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 the floppy disk, talking about the memory stick. Now, 10 years down the line, 2012, 2022, we're talking about the cloud. We were talking about the, 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 the SD card. It shows you how the technology is moving, how the cost content is moving. So the, the skills are going to be obsolete. So if you hire somebody who still believes that memory stick is everything, they're not going to lose because now we have moved into the cloud um, um, revolution. Now we have moved from the both room. We are now using Zoom. So we need to be adaptive. Adaptability question is at the hierarchy of the 
IQ of every business. So those are the things that we look at. And I think my time is uh, almost gone. And then I'll go to my next slide um, to say, one of the biggest problems that we're doing when we're building a startup, especially in Sarek, is that we think we're going to start and we're going to get a linear graph upwards. It's not going to happen. You're going to deep down, go down. You're going to see me in what we call the value of death. You will see the presentation when I, when I stay in. So be sure and be clear. First year to third year, if your business is going to make profits, you must be worried. If you're going to run a business that makes profit in the first 36 months, you must be worried. Very worried. There are those who celebrate 90 days. And 90 days, we call it a pizza, pizza days. It means if your business is going to thrive in the next 90 days, you must be seriously worried. Because sooner it's going to reach its plateau, goes down. So any business that is viable is going to last between first month to 36 months to get the ground right. Scaling and growth, you're going to get it after 36 months. Is giving, you can go to research. Facebook made its, its first profit at seven years. Um, Amazon made its first profit at the ninth year. You can name a lot. I mean, Apple made its first, you can name them all. So that's how you go to business. That is why we say separate yourself from small minded um, um, people and grow to what you call championing people. Entrepreneurs think small, um, start small, but think big. Innovation is one of the most important skills that we're going to use. Then the last one, let's look at the sectors that you can rely on when you come to start it. FinTech, guys, is an in thing. There's nothing we can do about it. It's how the global um, community is working. It's how the shift is working. FinTech are the, are, the, are the ruling in the market currently. So you're going to start a business. Look at how you engage the FinTech part of it. We're talking the crypto, we're talking the Bitcoins, people are now moving into digital money. Remember, um, in, 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 20, 2007, in 2007, carrying cash was the biggest thing ever in the world. When you're carrying cash, people will respect you. But I can still see it happening in East Africa and North Africa. I mean, I'm in West Africa. Then came the, uh, the uh, plastic money, the card. When you had a black card or a banking card around 20 to 2000, uh, 2012, 2013, you were the big guy, you were the in guy. Now, 2022, we're talking a different story. We're talking the NFTs, we're talking the cryptos, we're talking the Bitcoins, the, the cryptos. There's so much that is moving. So you need to prepare yourself to what the city, where she is going, because you don't want to run business like um, an analog kind of a mindset. You need to be digitally mindset. Now, the most important part is that Africa is better when it comes to architecture, which is the second um, sector that you can look at. Agri-tech is taking over. The future doesn't take more, um, um, traditional farming and traditional um, agriculture into, into consideration. We are changing. And then the, the third one, mining and manufacturing. Although manufacturing is still low because we're still depending on China, but we need now to build the, the, the we, we need to build the muscles around the manufacturing. But mining, we are still strong. Services, finances, and retail are scalable. They are getting a serious challenge, but they are still scalable. Tourism and hospitality, post-COVID, they're serious caution, skeptical, but they are industry that you can still go to. When you look at the innovation, how fast is coming, that tourism and hospitality is going to use what you call the 70-30. 30% will now use what you call traditional methods, but 70% will be into the technology and innovation. So when you go into tourism and hospitality, those are the things that we need to take in consideration. Then the last one is transport and logistics, especially yellow equipment. Yellow equipment is in demand because there's still a resistance of innovation into the big mines. But we need innovative machinery into the mines. And now transport and logistics, because goods still have to move around, we still depend largely on that. So those are the six, one, two, three, four, five, six sectors that when you stand in Sarek and other parts of the continent, you look at my traveling across the continent, I've been to 17 countries, I've made, I've hosted master classes, I've trained people, I'm mentoring a lot of people. These are the sectors that give them sleepless nights. The sectors that they used to do, they are now fading away because things have changed. We are moving with the global shift. So that is me, and I'm happy, and thank you very much. So when it comes to finding the pros and cons, guys, like I said, bootstrap is the own, own way, it's your own appetite. Seed funding, low appetite from investors, 
we still have a little number of VCs in this continent. That is why we're still relying on the UAE when it comes to and and, and America when it comes to um um, um seed funding, service funding. Then the, the the venture capital funding is so small. Private equity, we don't even talk about it. Public is even stressed. So there's a low appetite when it comes to seed funding. Service rounds funding, there's no appetite at all. It's very minimal. So if you're going to look for funding, those are the things that you must look at. Build a base on your own money, and then you can start approaching what you call investors. So that's me. Thank you. My name is Master Reme. They call me the coach. I'm the Aston Martin of Enterprise Development. Anytime you call me based on business development, I'm your guy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Powerful. Powerful. Thank you so much, Ndate, Ndate Sereme. And uh, now I can even let people know I wanted your work to be the one that announces you to people. Ndate Sereme is quite a powerful business person. Um, he is the chairman of Accuracy Group. He is a best-selling author, venture capitalist, director of Mondo Holdings, international speaker, founder of Startup Sadek, and P-A-D-E-X. I think I have mentioned maybe you haven't even uh, updated your socials, but um, this is just in the nutshell what, what we are seeing and what we have already heard, that you speaking about something from the heart and from the experience. While our, our participants, our attendees are preparing a question for you, um, you have your phone turned the other side in that. Now we are seeing you upside down. Okay. <laughs> um, while they are preparing questions, and uh, um, because we did say that we will have question and answer for you, I see also on on something that you did. I'm trying to help them also to think of the questions. There is a marathon that you you did, an inaugural annual marathon of seven four six kilometers. Is there any significance to that number? No, not really. Um, I was doing what you call um, entrepreneurship awareness in my province. So I was around in the province, going around the province, going to all the, the, the cities in the province. And it happens that after traveling for 25 days, working for 25 days, doing workshops and stuff, the kilometers arrived at 770 days. Right. That is powerful. I like that. So I wanted us to hear all that from you because that is something that not many people do to look at the social entrepreneurship as well. So we applaud you for that. Mm -hmm. One thing that we also would like to thank you for is the support for us women traders, women businesses. We thank you for that. As you have said that we speak about it, but we are not really giving much attention to looking for questions. Uh, good people, you just raise the hand and then Dr. Moss is here to take your questions. We are all to ask questions out after his presentation to learn from this is the workshop so that we can learn from the gurus, from people that have walked the path. Um, what are the blind spots that we as women, we tend to make? You have also spoken about mentorship. So what can you caution us to say as women businesses, try and avoid this, try and do this for you to succeed so that you don't take 10 years to break through? Um, these, are, these are common problems, but um, with women, believe me, because we, there's, there's, there's what you call masculinity around everything. And mm. um, integrity plays a bigger role because a lot of time, these industries, these opportunities, are male um, um, dominated. So when you find women, the, the, the least thing that you can do as a woman is to act vulnerable. On your stage, on your stage, believe in what you're doing, carry your hope, carry your strategy, carry your skills, and don't bash to any mediocrity because you're going to get most debt saying, before I'm funding you, you need to sleep with me. Before I'm doing this, you need to give me a relationship. Before you, so there will always be things of not integrity that are going to come. So you need to be bold, you need to own your territory and say, I'm not gonna do that because I know what I want to give you is something I believe in. So if there's, I have to call favors for it, we can leave. Be bold around that. When you open a business for women, boldness is the thing, something that you need to put at front. Number two, there's what you call women's syndrome, which is a lot of women that are 
they are real. Even if they know, they still hold back. Stop holding back. Go full force. Hit, hit the right spot. Once you've got something and you believe in it, take it out to the market. That's the most important thing that we need to do. And thirdly, we need to debunk. Although I don't, I support the, the black thing, I support the woman thing, the youth thing. Don't make it, um, don't wear it as your image. That just because you're a woman, you need to get this opportunity. Own the space. Look at it as I'm an entrepreneur. Take my female hood, put it there. I'm an entrepreneur. I can do this. Give it to me. I'll excel. I'll give you crazy examples. I've got two women that I'm mentoring. They started from nothing. When I started putting them into my mentor, um, mentorship program last year, March, they started with only business registration, three of them. Today, they wear overalls. They go down in the mine. They've flogged over 1 million rent revenue in the past 12 months. They say, coach, we never believe when you can. They came to me for presentation. We will stay up to late preparing them. Today, I can safely say I can give them the mic. I can give them the screen. They can flourish. Why? Because they started owning what they can do. So those are the things that I'm always advising women, that don't hold back. Go full force. Believe in what you do. And research for that. Even when difficult questions are coming, you don't panic. You answer them boldly, smiling, and with pride that I can do this. Hello. 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 Can somebody Hello? hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Uh, are you back? Princess? Hi, my princess. We can hear you. We can hear you, ma'am. Yes. We can hear you. Oh, all right. It's, so, so it wasn't that time. Are you back? You, you, the, the network there didn't give us those last few lines. We have a question, yeah. uh, a following question here from Tabiso Sigwan. Mm -hmm. I must just, I must just get to it. Uh, or Tabiso, do you want to, do you want to, to ask the question, please? Okay, uh, I just wanted to find out whether through your your experience, um, are you seeing a change in terms of government support and attitudes when it comes to recognizing how critical it is for small businesses and startups to be supported because of the value they bring to the economy? Uh, I, I, I have to accept and confess, our government is not ready for small businesses. Um, we, we, we are still an, an, uh, engraved in the concept of political strata. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, it's a talk show. Um, I'm, I'm having a meeting with the minister tomorrow of small businesses. These are the issues that I'm going to raise. That um, when is the government going to stop talking about entrepreneurship and start taking action? But as to the support from government, we, we, we can use um, um, unfair um, percentage um, scoring, I'll say two out of 10, two out of 10, they, they only come when it matters, but they are not there for small businesses. So when you start a business, you must know you're on your own, but make sure that at least you get a mentor who can open doors on your behalf, because some of us, our voice is stronger. So when we get into this office, at least we shake them because we don't beg them for helping us. We, we, are, we are advocating for um, people who, who are coming behind us. So we're no longer begging them to help us. Even if they don't help us, we don't care. But we try to show them that there's people behind me that need your help. So I'll say the government is not on board. At least now, the corporate is starting to come on board. That is where I'm always advising, especially women, there's some program that we call Masisizane, Senate Bank, I know it has, after it has. The corporate companies, they are at least coming on board to to give this entrepreneurship a serious consideration. But as for government, you you give it three or two out of 10. That is great. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you uh, Tabiso, for that question. It has helped um, many of us. I see Unkhonu uh, Kolisa, I think it is you who said you are Gogo, but now I see you are even ahead of us when it comes to technology. You also have a question, ma'am. You can ask me. 
Yes, I, I do. Thank you very much for the opportunity. That is Rame Khotso. Uh, I'm a lady from oh, South okay. Africa, as indicated. My question mm -hmm. is, when you watch, whether you watch a movie or you watch a documentary about any country in Africa, the most mm -hmm. suffering is with women. Starting from mm -hmm. women who have not been to school at all, I can see the efforts being mm -hmm. made by those who had gone to school and whatever, even those who have not been to school, some of them are doing, you know, uh, bead work and sewing and other African stuff. But what exactly is the plan to uplift those women? What is the plan of government or of governments of Africa to take care of those women, to lift them and pull them from wherever they are? Because as we speak, they cannot even attend a meeting like we have done. They cannot read an email. They cannot write an email. They, they cannot, they don't have access to important information. And the, the fewer women who are there trying to support them, they, they can't do it alo alone. I just want to understand where are our governments when it comes to the poorest of the poorest women of Africa? That's my question. Thank you, I'll appreciate an answer. Um, also, Polisa, <laughs> to be honest, um, one of my mottos is, I'll tell you the truth and the truth will tell you free. Um, to be honest, government is not at any level showing an appetite. And when you look at the overall of political system and political um, landscape and um, ecosystem of the continent, it's even worse when you go to other countries. There's no political way to, to engage such people. So where is our hope? Our hope now is landed on what we call um, social entrepreneurship, where we believe that uh, organizations like AWT can come and bridge the situation. Now we need to start from our ground rules as individual entrepreneurs, that from my community, and this is what I'm going to do to benefit people in my community. Then you can share it with the next community, share with the, with the next community. It becomes a chain of global um, 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 awareness. Then that's, that is where we can start. Because let me tell you, the government will never recognize those poorest of the poorest. Why? Because the minute they are going to be recognized, they're going to be um, um, enlightened. And when they become enlightened, they will start knowing the dividends of political um, um, economy. Now they will start choosing why when it comes to their political choices. So now that they're going to do that, they are left at the bottom of the pyramid to be the poorest of the poorest because these are the target markets. They are the niche market of politicians. So if they are enlightened, they will never vote with their conscience. So when they are at the poorest of the poorest, they will vote because they need the government assistance that never comes. So the, the appetite of changing the landscape is not there. So it's something that we can only wish, but I'm happy countries like Rwanda is coming. I'm happy countries like um, um, uh, 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 Tanzania is coming. Countries like Botswana is coming. Countries like South Africa is advocating. And these are the things that, remember, they were advocated by um, President Thomas Ankara. Remember when he died, he died a long time ago, that we need to... Uh, elevate people from the poorest mainstream. We need to elevate women. It's still not happening. 20, 30 years down the line. So I don't have a chance there, but what can we say? We don't just point the fingers to come with a solution. The solution is we need people like um, uh, Kolisa, we need people like Moss, we need people like Oliver to start from where they are and then create a chain, light the candle, and then take the candle to the next person. So if the veteran keep going, then the chain will be shorter and shorter and shorter. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for that question, Mekolisa. Um, I see that our next speaker is still battling with the network, so maybe we will just have you to hang around. Do you have a few more times so that we don't, uh, while we are helping her to come back, she keeps on coming in and out. I think it is the network. So what I'm hearing from you is advocacy is quite important. Holding someone's hand so that they also grow, which is something that I think as Africans, we are still lagging behind in doing. 
you know, giving somebody else confidence at the door that you have already opened. We hear people even complaining that as women, once we are in that boardroom, we want to be the only ones that are celebrated. We want to sit on about 100 boards and nobody else must come on board. We don't even, uh, you know, do what you have done, having people to shadow us or overshadow us or turtle us so that they also there is an opportunity and a chance to, to bring others on board. How do we help one another from the men's perspective? At least it's not a woman who's complaining about, you know, from the men's perspective to do what you are doing, mentoring each other, having confidence that your space, even as me, it will still be there, even if I can bring another woman in the boardroom. So um, one thing that holds Africa Bank chair is um, collaboration is still something that we don't believe in in Africa. We still believe in silo operations, um, corner celebrations, own, own, own glory um, 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 stuff. But the minute we start opening doors for other people and start knowing that the pie is too big for one person. So if you are able to open a door, try to open other doors for other people. So that's the biggest problem in Africa. Collaboration is still something that we're not doing. And we need to emphasize on that, that collaboration, 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 so that it becomes easier for somebody in Kenya to do business in South Africa without even traveling to South Africa. It must be simple for somebody in, 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 in Uganda to be able to trade in South Africa without even coming to South Africa. So until we win on that part, we are not going to, to go anywhere further. But I still believe that the little that we're doing needs to be elevated. We need a bit of speed so that we can start running faster. That's, that's my, my answer to, to that question. But as men, we... We need to debunk that this notion that um, helping women has to come with a favor. It, it, it has to come to an end. And it, we need to start from where we are. You need to start with your sister. You need to start with your, you need to start with your, your brother, your, 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 your cousin, sister. You need to start with all the female people that are in your house before you go to the street so that people can understand that this thing called collaboration, this thing called partnership, this thing called assistance, you talk it from brotherly roots, then as men, we can change the continent. I, I like what I hear. Thank you so much. That this thing, and talking from the men's perspective, you know, because sometimes it gets abusive where these favors are needed and where for me to be successful and I need to do the favor to this man, it needs to come to a stop. And we wish you that that voice can be can reverberate into the whole country and to all our business counterparts, all our brothers, that we need to hold hands of each other without expecting anything. What is Ubuntu if we now have lost that principle, if we now have lost that value? Um, ladies and gentlemen, there is also a question to say, how do they get hold of you? I don't know if uh, Oliver will allow us to, to divulge such information or it should only be through the yes, AWT? So we, yes, so we will post, um, so everybody, uh, we will post their, our details on the chat, but they can also reach us through the communication email um, at um, um, uh, Africa Women in Trade. Um, but we'll share those details on the chat. Thank you. Great, 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 great. Any other question for people? We are still trying to get our next speaker back back online. So uh, that they, we have requested that. Um, OK. Hey, Memato, we're still struggling to get Stable Network to join the session. Um, I, I, goodness. I have shared the document with um, Oliver. You share it with the admin. And then my contact details are there and other things if um, I'll be needed. Unfortunately, I have to drive another 200 kilometers somewhere. So if there are no questions, can I be excused? Yes. No, thank you so much. As I, I don't see any other hand. And we thank you for allowing us to um, bring you in the room and, and, and supporting us as women. We hope when we knock at your door very soon enough that you will also um, open the door and say, this is what I have learned when I went to Northwest. If you can say the dogs are being tied, 
you are welcome, my sisters. Come, let us do this business together for the Africa that we want to see. And let us succeed so that when we succeed, when you succeed, when I succeed, all of us succeed. That is the principles of Ubuntu. Let's see, is about that cooperatively and collaboratively, which is the sustainable goal number 17. It's about coming together, working together cooperatively and winning together. Ndade, thank you so much. On behalf of our founder and our team of leadership, we really, really salute you for coming on board today and teaching us. We have learned so much. And we have been fed and nourished and we are going to be working with you together and thank you thank you so much and may god continue to lift you above all nations and lifting your business and blessing you thank you karibu sana asante sana kale wahame enkosi enkosi karibu 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 so uh because we are battling to get our our memabu who is the founder of lifakong and also the president of Mdasa, who is already a trading businesswoman in Moringa, successfully so in Moringa. Um, we, we unfortunately now have to bring in Oliver to come and tell us what is next. Oliver Chikodore, my brother from another mother. Thank you so much, guys. I just wanted to say apologies. Um, I was at the mining in Daba and we had an accident. Not myself, but uh, on the roads, um, the traffic was in jail. But uh, thank you so much for the great presentation. Thank you to Tate Seleme uh, for uh, his inspiration, words of inspiration um, to the women. So we very appreciate. Um, I'm just going to, uh, okay, Jay, you want me to put a camera? I will put the camera, I'm using two devices on my laptop. But uh, because of the network and behind me, uh, it's a little bit of noisy. So let's see. Is my camera on? Yes, um, we can see you and hear you. It's coming. Um, I'm just trying to put my camera on as well on my other device. Is it on? Just a sec. Um, Joy, the, the camera is coming. <laughs> uh, so I me try to share my screen. So um, um, Princess, I don't know how much you have shared in terms of the, the upcoming conference. Um, so just allow me to maybe close the first device and just use the laptop. I think you guys, if I do it, if I do this. Are you able to see me on the, to hear me on the, on the computer? Yes. Sorry. Yes, I we can see you. Just a sec. <laughs> Apologies for that. I'm just going to share my screen. Just a sec. See, I share this. You may, Oliver, 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 Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for being here. Oliver is still Hello, preparing. Hello, Princess. Okay. Are you able to give me the right to share? I saw you have muted me. OK. Joy? Yes, you can share. Yeah. Um, Maybe to help you? No. Oliver?
Oliver. 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 Yeah, if, if you're having issues, I can take up from here. Uh, uh, maybe Oliver can just, it, it's just to screen. do that. We were trying to help you with the sharing. Okay, all right. Okay. So you can I just do the last side of, the um, of the conference. Of the conference, Oliver. Oliver. Okay. We ended, yeah, I was we gonna ended share here. My side, but that's, that's fine. And you can just leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Princess. Um, and thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining in. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about our first ever African Women in Trade Expo and Conference that will also include an award gala in Cape Town, South Africa. It's coming up uh, in October this year. I did share um, some information already on the on the chat. So if you have not registered, please uh, register. Um, the whole objective of this conference is to create uh, marketing opportunities um, among women and youth businesses in South Africa, but also to build the intra-Africa trade um, and to trade among each other as African businesses, but also looking uh, beyond um, uh, markets beyond just um, just Africa. So I encourage um, all the women and um, youth entrepreneurs uh, to register. Uh, we'll also be sharing a lot of information um, uh, on the chat box. Um, this conference will take uh, place in Cape Town from the 20th and the 22nd of October. Um, just uh, this is the expo. And then we'll also have um, a package for the different um, social activities such as the Cape Peninsula Tour. We'll also be doing um, the, the wine lens. I saw Ayanda Mgwenya is posting how do we register. So Ayanda will be, there is um, a message on the chat box uh, where you have all the information and the link uh, to register. You can register as an exhibitor or as a participant or you can also reach out to us, um, to the team, if you like to partner with us, maybe as a media partner or as a sponsor. So we are willing to uh, collaborate and to partner with you to make this event a great success and to make sure that we bring all the necessary support that is needed to empower the women and the youth across the continent. I think there was somebody that asked a question a little bit earlier uh, to uh, Tate Sereme with regards to is the government, is the African government uh, doing enough, um, giving enough support um, or creating conducive um, environment for small businesses? I can say they are not, but we can not do without the government. So I think what we have to do as entrepreneurs is to be citizen, but also to collaborate and to show the one another. Because when we collaborate, we can be we can influence policy. Um, I'm an economist by profession, and we do define economics um, into three key variables: how much money, quality, and depends of the labor force and how quickly can we turn those two into productivity. So if we have more people or more labor force or people that are empowered or entrepreneurs that can be able to work together, we can influence for this and find ways um, to work um, with. So uh, for listening, uh, so if you have on the chat, uh, on the chat for today to avoid disappointments, uh, participation is free for everybody and there is a fee to exhibition and to other activities. But if you are registered as a member, you will get a 10 or to 15% uh, discount. So thank you so much uh, for listening and the team will be reaching out to you. Uh, you can post your questions or comments on the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Oliver. We've just been hit by, by load shedding, but what we are going to do now is I'm going to put Memabu on the speaker and she will present uh, from my phone. 
So this technology we are going to use by force by fire. We are going to have this day to be a success. So yeah, um, just a second. Just a second, just a second. So don't worry now, I'm, I'm also on load shedding, but we are going to go forward. Aluta continua, can I hear that? Aluta continua. Hello. Hi, Ma'am Abu, you are now on the speaker. You can do your presentation, Ma'am. Okay, good evening, everybody. Can we hear? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, yeah. continue, continue, Ma'am. Oh, guys, sorry, man. We, I'm driving, you know, city, so it's a bit icy. But I'll say what I need to say uh, without further ado. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about the mishap with the connectivity issue. Um, but my presentation was going to focus more on women in agribusiness, agriculture, and particularly in the Moringa space. I'm going to have to stop because I'm driving in the dark. Can you guys give me five minutes and call me back? All right. Okay. Please, can you call me back in two minutes? I need to stop, otherwise I won't. Okay. Okay, I'll call yeah. you. I'll call you back just now. Um, Oliver has already spoken. Oliver, do, do we? You can speak more about how to register, how how to get hold of us, and just so that we are rolling while I'm busy helping her, staying with her online as well, and the membership as well. Part of it that we do have even the 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 social medias and anybody who would like to join us. Oliver, are you there? Joy, Joy. Yes, hello. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Thank while you. I'm sorting out Mabu, please speak on Thank that side. Yay, that's that's our president right there, our founder. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. I've, um, normally, I want to support you as much as I can, and I'm here for technical issues. Of course, I'm here to support. And thank you for making this possibility to host the South Africa uh, chapter. Uh, actually, the, the the second webinar and Oliver Kennedy, they did have one much earlier on last year, and um, you're listening to me from from Germany, and uh, we are here to support as much as we can, and uh, really empowering women as you have heard. If we don't do it ourselves, who's gonna do it for us? And we don't. We know the technology is really difficult on the ground. That's why. Uh, we try to use as much as possible. Right now, we also uh, we have recorded this on YouTube for all our members who are never able to join in, in, in live, but they can join that later. So we do have a YouTube channel, subscribe to it. And you can see so many, so many programs that we have done in the past as well. And um, so what Oliver was telling you, we're very, very excited because finally, finally we'll come to to meet each other in person on, on in October in South Africa. I'm so excited about this. And as you heard the, about the SDG, uh, the goal, the goal that uh, we talked about, um, about the goal of making sure that, that, um, that the goal number 17, which I believe is one of the strongest goals of all the others, because if you know how to collaborate and partner with each other, which we are doing here right now, what we're doing today and also on all our platform, is working with others, not reinventing the wheel, but going back and working with others who are doing products and services that we are need. And really with the Ubuntu, as you heard, which is actually very much for South Africa, is pulling each other up and all of us being success at the same time. We believe that we are not expert of everything, but some of the women are expert in something. And that was, came out very clearly from some of you who mentioned about, are we reaching to the women on the grassroots? So my question is, are you reaching out to the women on the grassroots? Because you are the person who on the vehicle that to them, you can help them the little bit they can. And we are here to pull up the others who are able to reach to the next level. And, um, and the African Women in Trade is trying the best to make sure that we reach all the women. We know uh, whenever the women are in business and producing products, and they are very good at that. They're very good at bringing up their products to the best. And this is why we, we are here to help market access, as we saw one of our biggest, biggest 
um, uh, uh, objectives is, and, and, and one of the pillar is to make sure we reach, uh, we help you to market uh, your product. And this is the whole idea of also having the whole hosting the African women in trade in South Africa. We will be actually finding out what can South Africa offer the, 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 the continent first before we go to the, to the global market. So we are bringing a lot of women all over the continent in Africa coming in to network with you. So I'm looking forward for you coming to exhibit your product or even being curious I like the curious people because from the curious people you learn something new and entry ticket as you had is free for you. Uh, so you have no reason not to be there if you want to exhibit and if you're a member, we give you a position to do because they are looking for products that are ready to trade with one another. Of course, following the after content of free trade here, we know it's a very difficult, uh, it's, it's still in the forming and formulation of, of, of protocols, but I think they've done their best now. It's time for us. Uh, uh, the private sector to, to start really practicing it and giving out feedback, expecting very, very good topics uh, coming numbers during the conferences. There's a lot, of, a lot of information for you to help you to move from one space to another. And don't forget, have been, we have not really met. So this will be the first time to meet. So in person, so this is a good time. And any business, as you saw one of our, our biggest one is trust, relationship. This is the time to come and build your network your relationship and build trust. And after that, when you go home, you can follow up all these things that thanks go to the digital watch the technology. You can reach out to each other after really putting the face to the product and to the person. And for me, we all go with the trust. We build this trust for over one year. I've not met any one of you here, probably not, but I'm gonna be meeting you as well on the ground because I don't believe I can do this on my own. So that's why we team up with so many and, and and, and we are working very closely with both of our, 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 um, our youth, uh, South Africa youth uh, representative, as well as the, as the South Africa representative. And if you want to be also part of this and you can bring a lot of uh, input, reach out to us. We are happy to work with you as well. So yeah, so there's a quite a lot coming up as well. Thank you everyone who's listening and I'm really appreciating that. So I hope we could be able, uh, uh, we able to, what, have you been really able to reach our princess? Have you managed um, to get hold of the of the speaker of today? And we try our best to make sure that we reach our people. So I'm looking yeah. forward to hear about Maureen. Um We have been trying. Uh, when he she calls, I'm unable to hear her. When I call her, she's unable to hear okay. me. So you know what? I we think we, we will have her next time. Yes, this is the first, or the second webinar. So we are, we we are planning to have every three every three months a webinar. And I think we've been given a lot of information to go digest for now. And then mm -hmm. we'll share with you as well the presentation that we are, that uh, was not able to present, but we try to make sure that we give you information that you can already start looking at it. And I think it was really well presented. So I hand back over to you to, to close the, the, the webinar. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So it did well. All things are working together for our good so that we can see you. Um, thank you so much. We are also very excited as a South African team that we are going to be hosting the world in October and it's going to be our um, spring season. So we are really looking forward to hosting everybody uh, that we will be now, the, the, you know, for the first time that uh, AWT is coming to us. So we are working hard. Everybody make sure that you register online. Make sure that you are part of us. Make sure that you are always um, at par with what is going on. So ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the end of our session of our workshop of today. We'd like to thank everybody who has been contributing into making this a success. Mercy, are you there? Are you there? We'd like to say Asante Sana. We'd like to say Asante Sana to all our leadership team that has forever backing each other up from all countries in the continent and even um, in the diaspora. Thank you to Joy and thank you to Oliver. You know, they say behind every successful woman, there is a, a successful man or a strong man. Thank you so much. Thank you to our speaker, Ndate Sene. Thank you to all of you. Please, to all of you, just know that you are amazing because you made this workshop 
of us, the South African chapter, to be a success. Without you, we would have been talking to ourselves. So please give yourself, let's, let's see the cameras, give yourself a, a round of applause, or click, please let's see the camera so that we can have a screenshot. And you are also.